Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this uh, Dawa webinar. Uh, today, we're talking about our face mask detection solutions. So uh, a very warm welcome to, uh, to everybody. Um, for anybody who hasn't attended one of these webinars before, my name is Simon Nash, um, and I work for Dawa in the UK and also in, uh, in Ireland. Um, let me take you through the agenda of the subjects that we're going to be covering throughout the course of today's webinars. To start with, um, we'd like to tell you a little bit about, as a recap, some of the features of our TIOC camera. Um, and we'll talk about why we call it TIOC and, and especially what makes it unique to Dawa. Um, but then we're very proud and pleased to be able to tell you about a new feature, face mask detection. Um, so as you would have seen in the news, uh, this, is all, uh, this is all now becoming a legal requirement in many, uh, in many places. Uh, around the country. And uh, we have this feature, a face mask detection, that uh, we'll talk to you a little bit more about in detail uh, later in the presentation. And then also talk about something that we haven't really spoken about before on these webinars. And that's a technology um, that, that Dawa released many, many years ago. It's, we call it HDCVI. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that technology, give you a, I'll give you a background to, uh, to what it's all about and, and why it represents a great opportunity for you uh, as users and, and installers of Dawa technologies uh, to, to, um, to find solutions for your, for your customers. So um, at the end of that, we'll, we'll finish off with, um, with Q&A. Um, please don't just keep the Q&A to the end of the session. Of course, if you have questions, please send them in. There's a team of people here uh, already and waiting to, uh, to answer your questions. So send them in via chat. Um, and if some of them uh, are still live at the end, um, we'll uh, we'll deal with them. If we don't get time during the webinar today, then I can assure you we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll get back to you in the next 12 or, or 24 hours. Okay, so let's kick off by uh, talking about our TIOC camera. So firstly, why do we call it TIOC? Well, TIOC is an acronym that stands for three-in-one camera. So there's a, a little look at what the cameras look like. I'm um, pretty distinctive with those red and blue lights that you see uh, you'll see on the front of it, and we'll uh, we'll talk about that and uh, and the function that they uh, perform. A little bit later in the webinar. So three-in-one camera, TIOC. It's an industry first from Dawa, but why? Okay, well let's take a look. Firstly, you will see, and, and many cameras in the industry feature what we call full color, or what what generally is referred to as full color. So this is the ability of a camera to give a very good full color image, irrespective of the lighting conditions. Active deterrent. There are lots of active deterrents around in the industry. Um, you can have um, all whistles and bells and lights and all sorts of things that flash um, and give a, a visible deterrent to, uh, to, to an intruder. And also artificial intelligence. Well, AI features in, in many cameras with, within the industry. However, what makes this unique from, from Dawa and makes it an industry first is the fact that we combine those three different features, full color, active deterrent and artificial intelligence, we combine them all into our range of TIOC cameras, which makes it an industry first for Dawa. But why did we do it? Well, let's have a look at what some of our customers tell us. So we've got a slide here uh, that talks about um, the, the customer's requirement and, 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 and why they have that requirement compared to uh, the current situation. So we know statistically that most crimes occur at night. And, and it's very difficult to produce, even, even with um, lighting, it's difficult to produce good color images at night. So if you, for identification purposes, if you want to identify a, su a suspect, you, know, you, you can't say, well, the person had a, you know, um, um, a pair of blue jeans on, makes it very, very difficult to, to identify. So the customer requirement very much is to have high quality images at night with good evidential quality recordings. So when you, when you have to give the, uh, the recordings to the police, you can clearly make out and identify the person who uh, you're looking for. Also, we're told um, that there are too many false alarms for operators to handle. I'm sure many of you would have experienced, as I have, being in a control room and there was alarms going off in, in all over the place. And often operators just ignore those alarms because they know there's a tree near camera 37 and it's a little bit windy today. Every time the tree moves, it sets off an alarm. Okay, so too many false alarms. And actually, only 1% of the total number of alarms that are, that are received in, in maybe an alarm receiving center or, or perhaps in the control room itself are actual alarms. So it often means that a lot of alarms are actually just ignored. So customers tell us they want a system which features less false alarms, which allows for a far more meaningful response. Also, 
large estates are hard to patrol. If you have a large campus, maybe a university campus or a large commercial center, it makes it very difficult for, uh, for, for security guards to be able to patrol and manage that, which therefore it can take a long time for a guard to get to an incident to, to, to deliver a frontline re response. So technology can help us here by having forms of automated response and being proactive about the, uh, the, the type of security we're providing using things like active deterrent and two-way audio, we can provide a, a, a far more efficient proactive security solution. But when it comes to the recording, it can take a long time and a lot amount of data, high definition recordings, uh, HD recordings, et cetera, they, they consume a lot of uh, data. It can take a long time to search for the incident that you're looking for, which is pretty low efficiency. Operators tell us and, and customers tell us that they want more use of artificial intelligence to be able to filter down to the actual incidents that they're looking for. And we can do that using uh, more advanced search engines. And of course, we already touched on this, the high cost of video storage. Everybody, I know, I, even though the price of storage is, is dropping constantly, almost year on year, uh, it, there still is a cost because as storage price is dropping, that bandwidth is increasing, data rates are, are increasing because of high definition. So almost one is offsetting the other. And, and of course, as I said, that leads to a high bandwidth requirement. So it's important that as a leading manufacturer of, of AI technology, we're, we're including the latest algorithms, the latest coding algorithms to not only be more efficient, but to cut down the bandwidth and also therefore cut down the amount of information that's stored. So all of these solutions, all of these customer requirements are encompassed in the Dawa Tioc solutions. So let's take a look at some of the values of the uh, of the Tioc solution. So to start with, as we said at the beginning, it's a three-in-one solution. It combines the artificial intelligence, it combines the active deterrent, and it combines the full color capabilities. So it really is a, a powerful three-in-one solution. Full color monitoring, 24-7, full color performance. Active deterrent, so to warn off intruders, and you can do that with the uh, the red and blue flashing lights, um, or you can do it using two-way audio that we'll touch on a little bit later <clears throat> in the presentation. Also, the, the deep AI learning algorithm, the ability to be able to, to feature and to uh, um, filter down different types of alarms, so it, maybe to rule out or to disregard environmental noise, such as from trees and animals, etc., and being able to filter, is it a person or is it a vehicle? So the deep AI learning algorithm and the chipset inside enables that to be, uh, to, to be possible for the operator. And of course, the coding, the AI coding, is able to reduce the bit rate by up to 90% compared to H.264. So those are some of the solution values and what they mean for the customers. Let's take a look at some of the, uh, just some of the, the, the key uh, features and specification. So currently we have a two and a five megapixel resolution version, eight megapixels coming soon, as they say. For the uh, IR illuminators, the two white LEDs that you can see over on the, uh, the right-hand side or, or the one on the, the, um, on, on the mini dome camera, uh, is 20 meters illumination distance for a 2.8 millimeter lens. But for a 3.6 millimeter lens, it's 30 meters and 40 millimeters for a six mil lens. So, you have a choice, different different uh, illumination distances depending upon the uh, the angle of the lens. Um, we also store in, in it, this is featuring now, talking a little bit more about the active active deterrent. We we feature in um, eight voices or defaulted uh, that, that are defaulted recordings that can be triggered on on an emotion on a motion event, or they can be triggered uh, either automatically or manually, um, or you can customize your own recording, and you can uh, you can do that from the uh, from the control room. And already touched on the red and blue LEDs as a powerful warning signal, and that's kind of internationally recognised as a as a very strong uh, very strong indication that perhaps the the emergency services or, or similar have been uh, have been alerted. So it really does get the attention of uh, of the intruder. So let's take a look. We said full colour, active deterrent, and artificial intelligence. Let's drill down and take a look at these because they all together combine the features of the TOP. And then we can talk about the new feature that we've added to, to this, uh, this range of cameras. So let's delve into the full color a little bit and talk in, in more detail 
<laughs> about the features and benefits that that brings and how, and how we deliver it. Well, the first technology we use here is a large aperture lens. So this is a, a, the maximum aperture is f1.0, which allows 2.5 times the amount of light into the, into the camera compared to an f1.6 lens. We also have a, a self-developed high performance sensor, which increases the photosensitivity by 30%. So really contributing to that, that low light performance. And an advanced signal processor, ISP4. So this is a set, again, a self-developed technology that Dow was developed in, in our research, uh, research laboratories that allows advanced signal processing and, and efficient handling of the signal. And of course, we use uh, warm light LEDs as well which keeps the radiance at 40%, so well below EU standards. So we're not causing problems with light pollution if the cameras are used in, uh, in, in a, a, um, a domestic area, a residential area. So let's take a look at this low light performance and show you in, uh, in picture form rather than uh, features and specification. Let's show what it looks like in, in reality. So these are um, two pictures, two contrasting pictures taken uh, back in uh, back in June, uh, and you can see they're at 22:31 p.m. So quite quite dark. And if you look at the image on the left, that's with the warm LEDs off. And if you look at the image on the right hand side, it's with the warm LEDs on. And it's very very clear to see that if you look in some of the the dark areas here, there there are many things that uh, are now visible with the warm LEDs on that perhaps you uh, you wouldn't have been able to see before. So for example. Um, in the case of the, uh, you know, the bushes, there could have been an intruder perhaps hiding in the bushes or uh, behind the car. Um, and, and again, not even completely clear that there's a ladder in the, in the foreground of the image. So uh, the warm LEDs are really, uh, really creating you know, a, a different dimension to the video and, uh, and, and enabling uh, identification and a better evidential quality video. So that's, that's one application. Let's now have a look at the, um, let's have a look at this video. This is a video taken by um, just a standard, uh, a standard phone. Hopefully uh, this, this will play out okay for you. Um, if I play the image, you can see the car park here. Um, again, this is without LEDs on, but as the, uh, as the video plays, you can see the person comes down now to look at the display on a monitor. And that's just the, uh, that's just the um, standard default image from the, the TIOC camera without the LEDs on. So a really big, a really big difference uh, shows the um, the powerful uh, nature and the uh, the high performance of the uh, of, of the camera system and the ability to work in a low light low light capability scenario. But when do the the LEDs switch on? So we we talk a, a little bit about this earlier. Uh, let, let's take a look at when the warm LEDs actually switch on. So you know, um, as as on, we've had on previous models, we've had starlight mode. And if you plot a graph of time versus light level, you can see as the light level reduces over time, then eventually when we get to, for um, the two megapixel version, um, 1.21 lux and 2.53 for the slightly higher, for the, uh, the five megapixel, then the warm LEDs turn on. So they come on to really boost the performance. When, when the image is getting almost unusable uh, for evidential purposes, the warm LEDs click in, and give you the uh, give you the very good quality images that you saw in a couple of slides ago. So that's the full color. Um, let's take a look at some of the active deterrent features. So to start with, and, and again we talked about this a little bit earlier on, um, the red and blue LEDs. So these are very noticeable. Um, one of the reasons we use red and blue LEDs is because they are very easy to see in heavy fog and rainy conditions. So in the UK, we, we do suffer a, a, a range of different weather conditions. Um, in, in the rain and the fog, they're very, very noticeable. Also, they have that, they're, they're very eye-catching because we're used to associating red and blue lights with emergency services, police, et cetera. So having those flashing alter, alternating red and blue light. And if I, try and, uh, if I try and play this video, you should, see, you should see that. And hopefully that's coming through on your, uh, on, on your display. So that uh, the ability to uh, to create that active deterrent can can scare off a lot of uh, a lot of intruders. I um, also touched on the fact that we have two-way audio and the fact that there there is another active deterrent feature. This one is featuring the uh, enhanced speaker. 
Um, so you can see that we have a, an even greater speaker performance of, of more than 110 decibels compared to the previous, the previous model. So a very powerful speaker. And this is very important when you come to, to consider the new features that we're talking about in, in a few moments of the face, cut, face mask detection. So you need a powerful, clear speaker with a good low frequency response to be able to deliver that message in a, in a powerful way. The other feature is, of course, two-way audio. And, and again, we've got a good quality speaker with, with a, a, over 110 decibel sound level. Let's utilize that feature and, and have two-way talk. So it's possible to talk um, in a two-way two -way sense from the control room to the camera or the camera to the control room. So it's very, very helpful if you've got a security guard who's out on patrol and they receive an alarm, they can view it on their handheld device and they can talk directly from their handheld device to the camera and to the to the to the intruder it may not be an intruder maybe somebody has just got lost is seeking some help etc and they can provide the, uh, the the reassurance or the guidance if necessary to uh, to help them out so it's a very personalized um, active deterrent as i said it can be using one of the, the one of the preset audio features or it can be customized or you can use two-way audio all of that is utilizing the uh, the the powerful the powerful speaker that we uh, we talked about just now so very powerful active deterrent features. So now let's move on to the third part, the artificial intelligence. So this one, or AI, artificial intelligence, uh, encompasses a number of different features. Let, let's take them one by one. Firstly, smart motion detection. Well, we probably most of us are familiar with some form of smart motion detection. A lot of cameras in the industry feature intelligent motion detection, smart motion detection, et cetera. But smart motion detection version two allows us to detect objects of movement at more than 185% compared to the smart motion detection one. Not only are we able to detect at a much greater distance and for the camera not to be triggered uh, at, a, at that longer distance, we're able to reduce the false alarm rate to less than 2%. So effectively, we're making the false alarm rate at night the same as it is during the day. So if you think about that from an operator's point of view, it's less alarms that they're receiving in the control room or, or, the, uh, or the, the alarm receiving center, the ARC. Uh, it, it, it really makes life a lot easier. And of course, if you do have to then search for an alarm, then you've got less data, less alarm information to, uh, to search through, which should make getting to the piece of information that you need, that should make it quicker and a lot more efficient. Also, um, perimeter protection. We're able to filter out those, those annoying environmental conditions caused by things like leaves, um, anim small animals, et cetera, cats, dogs, uh, deers, and other, other, other objects that may move into the, the field of view of the camera. They're not gonna trigger the, uh, not gonna trigger the motion detection. Again, driving that false, false alarm rate down to less than 2%. And finally, the AI search. Well, this is a, a really, really critical thing, and it builds. Uh, this is the, the the culmination of the the previous two features that, that we've been talking about. So AI search is again able to filter out those leaves and uh, environmental non-related uh, um, detection points that we're, we've been talking about. So in this way, we're able to really by reducing the false alarms and the reducing the number of events, we're able to improve the search efficiency by up to 90, 98 percent. So what we've done here is taken just a, a snapshot of the um, of, of, of a screen from um, from from our software DSS Express, and if you look down here at the um, it, it, the bar, the blue bar at the bottom, you can see this is all the recorded information. So this is a very common scene. If you if you need to start searching through this 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 blue bar of data, this blue bar of recording, it can take you a long time to to do that to get to the incident that you're looking for. However, at Dawa, we have a slightly different approach. Using our artificial intelligence search, to start with, we're able to detect and identify and select whether we're looking for a person or whether we're looking for a vehicle. So these are two clear differentiators. We're, so we'll say in this example, we're just looking for uh, people, okay? So now the system is able within seconds to search through the database and give us only the occurrences of when people were detected. So if you look now, I've highlighted it in, uh, in, in red here. 
the amount of video that you have to search through is significantly reduced. So using this almost forensic type search capability, we're able to go from a huge amount of video data to search through to a much smaller amount, which is more meaningful. And it means that an operator will get to the incident they're looking for a lot quicker. So really improving the time to search and also the uh, operational efficiency. So as I said, take, take a look at that. It really is a, a very key feature, not only of, of the TIOC camera, but also in, 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 in our DSS Express. This is a, a really powerful piece of software. Not only does it have this feature um, for people, it, as I said, it has the vehicle search as well, but also go, going a little bit further um, on, on that search subject. Even when you're, when you're looking for people or vehicles, using the software, you could detect, you know, uh, you could ask, for example, if you, um, if you were looking for a vehicle, you could say, okay, show me, if, uh, I want to see all the Audi cars. That are, if, so if you have a series of cameras maybe monitoring a town center um, or a motorway, show me all the Audi cars that are red, that are five seri um, um, A5s, and that have a, a three in the license plate. And the system using that, build that intelligent AI filter will filter right down and show you just the cars that have those search criteria in. And you can do the same thing with people. Um, you could you could say people that are wearing maybe um, a black a, bl a black t-shirt, um, they have glasses and they have blue jeans, uh, and and that way uh, and and it will only show you the occurrences of those uh, of those parameters. So a really really powerful search engine, not just in the core but also enhanced and, and enabled by the AI that's in the TIOC and many of our cameras that feature AI capability. Um, we also said one of the other features is about coding. So the um, efficient algorithm is, is really, really critical because we all know that high, defini if high definition images are great. We all want to see the highest quality image, but that comes at a price because of course it takes a lot of bandwidth and it needs a lot of um, storage to store all of that information. So the, that really necessitates and drives the need to have an efficient coding algorithm. So we have um, a, an, a, an AI coding algorithm that allocates the bitrate priority to human and vehicles. So people and vehicles are coded and prioritized over the background information. So in this, this example here, uh, if, you, if you compare it to H.264 encoding, everything is treated as background information. Everything is the scene. So the H.264 algorithm will record everything or will code everything which pushes everything down across the network, which records everything onto the, uh, the hard drives. By AI coding, we're able to differentiate between the, the people or the vehicles and prioritize the, the, the coding towards them and kind of reduce the requirement on the background. So that's massively reducing the bitrate using um, a constant bitrate algorithm, which, as I said earlier, it can reduce the, uh, the, the bitrate by up to 90% compared to H.264. And remember, that brings up all sorts of advantages in, come, in terms of time to search and, and operational efficiencies that we talked on uh, a little bit earlier. So that really is a, a recap of our, of our TIOC cameras. Um, we have, as I said, the two and the five megapixel uh, versions. We'll talk, we'll got some information for you later on the, uh, on, on the types of camera, but this is, um, this, is, this is really, really key. It's key technology. The cameras are very, very popular, and, and I know all of our distributors have, uh, have availability of these cameras. So um, they, they've proven um, very, very popular so far. So uh, if, you, if you'd like to try one, then please uh, don't hesitate to contact us and we'll, uh, we'll arrange a demo. Well, let's now talk about something that's very much in the news. Let's talk about uh, the, the, the new feature that we've just added to the TIOC range. So we can almost say there's four features although this one probably comes in with um, with with the um, active deterrent. This is face mask detection. OK, so we're familiar. And, and again, I'm sure you you know, you've read the news or you uh, you follow you follow social media. Face masks should be worn in, in all shops and, and in England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, then the, and, and Northern Ireland, of course, this this is mandatory now. So we're, we're all familiar with the news and if you look at some of these dates, you know, um, from the 15th of June, everyone traveling by bus, train, ferry or plane in England must wear a face covering. OK, and of course, that scrolls all the way through different um, different different parts of the United Kingdom and Ireland. So our, our region, if you like, 
but culminating on the 24th, wearing face is mandatory now in uh, in in every uh, in in every part of the of, of England. So whilst countries and, and different countries, the devolved administrations and, and Ireland have different dates, the fact is there is some requirement to be able to detect, uh, maybe some, some irrespective of the date and the time, um, there is some requirement to be able to detect whether a person is or isn't wearing a face, face mask. So we've created, um, using, uh, using the latest innovation, a face mask detection solution, which will automatically detect if a person is, is detected by the camera and is wearing a, a face mask or, uh, or not. So when a person is wearing a face mask, the camera delivers, uh, sorry, when the person's not wearing a face mask, the camera will deliver, is able to deliver an audible recording uh, and it will play it out saying, please wear your face mask, please wear your face mask. So it's an, an, an audible reinforcement of, of that important message. And of course, if you have one of our access control related products like a TMAC, then that can be um, integrated into uh, the access control system. So in, in fact, it won't allow you access into the building if you're not compliant with the face mask policy. And of course, if we talk, look towards our customers, some of the current challenges are that there actually often needs to be um, a, a face mask, a, a person there monitoring the face mask and whether people are wearing face masks. So there needs to be a person to, to supervise that process. And of course, the person who's doing that is coming into relatively close contact with the person. And, and often that can be in an indoor environment. So it's, there, there, are danger, there are dangers there to, uh, to that person. By using this technology, using the active deterrent feature of the TIOP camera, we're able to, uh, we're able to reduce that risk and uh, provide an innovative uh, automated solution that can, uh, that can do the same job. So let's have a look at, uh, at how this works. So if a person uh, comes into the field of view of the camera, they're detected, uh, it's detected that they haven't worn a face mask. It prompts them, please wear a face mask, please wear your face mask. And, and then of course, they, um, I'm sure they would, uh, would abide by that. Um, again, a lot of places are, are very strict about this now, um, some, some less so. But of course, it's, it, it is important that we all, uh, we all comply. So that is the, uh, that, that is the very much the TIOC um, capability that we've been talking about so far. But just to touch on the, uh, our friend, the TMAC, because this technology is exactly the same. Uh, it again has the same algorithm inside. So it, please wear your face mask. And again, the person, the person receives an audible recording. They're detected by the camera. The AI algorithm detects that they, uh, that they are uh, not wearing the mask. It will prompt them to do so. And we have exactly this, uh, this system set up at our headquarters here in, uh, in Maidenhead. Um, again, and, and if you're not wearing a mask, it will prompt you. Okay, so some of the solution values of this new feature are firstly, and most importantly, it's safe. So it reduces the risk of infection of staff and customers. We're able to maintain a greater social distance. We're able to achieve, um, to achieve that distancing with the use of technology. It's real time. So you can provide, we can provide that real time alert and voice prompt. And that's played out directly from the camera or directly from the, uh, the, the TMAC solution. It's highly accurate. It's able to detect with a, with a certainty greater than 95% of, of accuracy. Even if the person tries to cover their face and tries to fool it, the system is able to, uh, to detect that. And, and it will still say, um, please, please wear your face mask. Uh, it's also cost effective. This is an upgrade to, um, to existing uh, TIOC cameras. Um, and again, it comes as standard on the, on, the, on the TMAC cameras as well. So high value solution, high value feature. And, and of course, now this is mandatory in, uh, in most parts of the UK and Ireland, then it, it really represents a, a good opportunity for you to uh, share this feature with, uh, with your customers. So. Um, this is not only uh, applicable to um, TIOC, um, but also our 5,000 5, series, uh, 5, series cameras that also feature um, active deterrent. So um, if you look down here at the bottom, uh, not only are, is, it, is it applicable on the, uh, on the TIOC cameras, but also over here on the 5,000 series cameras with, uh, with active deterrent. So we're going to share these slides afterwards. 
um, to give you uh, to get to give you uh, the, the the information as a reference. So on the right hand side, we've given you plenty of information about um, about the product selection. So it enables you to make a, a, a better choice. But let's not just forget. Let's not forget about our friend uh, the TMAC. Uh, the TMAC camera again, just uh, as a refresher, comes as a floor standing, a wall mounting, desktop, or a turnstile solution. Features the same face mask detection. It can feature it as a standalone unit, or if it's linked into uh, into DSS Express. So again, it does the mask rec uh, face, facial recognition, mask detection, access control, and uh, of course, different, it has different display modes to uh, to protect people's privacy. So just looking back at the um, the, the the TIOT cameras, these are uh, again, I'm not, not going to go through all of these uh, bullet points one by one. It's there as a source of reference for you. Um, this is a, a snapshot, if you like, of the the features of the uh, the bullet and the mini dome camera. Uh, so if you uh, if you if you need any reference and you need the model numbers, the information will be sent to you later today. So that's very much the the TIOT camera side. Um, this is of course the um, the NVR. So we need a if if you want to record the solution, then we have a series uh, of the 2000 or the 4000 series uh, NVR. Uh, and, and they're the I, I series to indicate the artificial intelligence. So again, you can see the capabilities listed there. I'm not going to go through them now. It's there for a, a source of reference when uh, when we distribute these uh, these slides to you later today. Okay, so really coming to the end now of the of the new feature about face mask detection. If you want to have more uh, information or you'd like to find out more information about uh, face mask detection. Uh, you can go to go to uh, go to the link shown there, or you can uh, send us an email. You can contact me or any of my colleagues, any any of your uh, local Dawa uh, representatives, and and find out more information. Okay, so there's a bit of information for you about an exciting new feature that's been uh, that's been added to our Tiot camera range. What I want to talk about next is the uh, a, a really nice technology. I I think this represents an excellent opportunity for uh, installers and integrators to work with end users to, um, if you like, leverage or, or take advantage of an existing investment that they've made maybe in a coax infrastructure. This is something we haven't really talked about very much on uh, on any of our webinars, but I'd like to explore this in uh, in more detail in in the uh, the weeks and months to come. So to start with, what is HDCVI? What does it mean? Well, it means high definition across a composite video interface. So HD images across a piece of coax. That's simply put. It's a very, very simple, very, very simple solution uh, that allows you as installers to, and, and, and if you're an end user, to, to um, avoid scrapping, if you like, your existing coax infrastructure. Because of course, coax is limited in terms of the, uh, in terms of the quality of the images that you can send across it. Um, it, that very much limited. You can't send high definition high definition images from an analog camera. If you upgrade that with uh, to an HDCVI solution from Dawa, you can take advantage of the latest HD images. Um, it's actually not a new technology to us, but it is relatively new to the to the UK um, as, as far as we're concerned. So this was launched all the way um, back in 2012, and we've gradually seen various progressions and upgrades. As, as we've gone through. And, and this year, we're able to talk now, <coughs> excuse me, about HD CVI 6.0. So, so let's take a look at some of the, uh, some of the different scenarios that you, uh, that you may experience. Well, we know, um, we know that a lot of customers still to this day have a big infrastructure of, of coax cables still installed in their, in their buildings and in their facilities. Um, of course, that can be very expensive to rip out, and it can be even more expensive to to replace. So, um, if you think about the fact that we can enable we can enable the the reuse of that infrastructure, the the reuse of that that cable backbone within the uh, within the the new CCTV system, that can really represent a big saving in terms of deploying a, an HD system across a piece of coax. Also, we can uh, we can send uh, power power across the coax to reduce the cost in, of de deploying separate power supplies for cameras. So if you think about having to, to, to install a camera and a power supply at every location, with, with this solution, you don't, need to, you don't need to do that. 
so so by um, by powering by powering the things centrally, we can uh, we can save a lot of installation cost. Um, uh, and of course, when that filters down to the end user, that can really represent a significant saving. So in terms of the business challenges, um, it, it it is complex to the construction environment. You know, often it's very difficult to rip out and replace rip out and replace new uh, new cable with old or old with new, I should say. It's very different different with uh, power supplies. You can get a lot of uh, different problems using remote and discrete power supplies. And of course, the main main factor there is the um, the installation cost, time cost, money, and all that filters down eventually through to the customer. So the user benefits of an HDCVI solution are the fact that it reduces the need for separate power supplies. So again, as I touched on earlier, you can uh, you, you really need to rely on one source powering all of the cameras remotely. It's stable, and of course, therefore, it will enhance uh, system reliability. And of course, it provides com complete protection because of operational safety. We can cut through the piece of coax, and it will automatically uh, switch off the power to avoid uh, to, to avoid any problems. So ideal applications like marketplaces, parking areas, museums, uh, etc., yeah, civic civic centres, anywhere where there's a big investment in uh, in in, in analogue infrastructure, can, can take advantage of this. So some of the the sales features, just as a just as a, a touch through, really, 4K. We can send 4K images across a piece of coax at 25 or 30 frames per second. That's a huge achievement. If you compare that to what the customers were used to in the analog world, it's a massive improvement. So 25, 30 frames per second of 4K images across a piece of coax. And we, again, utilize enhanced artificial intelligence. So we can keep that false alarm rate right down, sub 2% sub two false alarm rate. And again, AI coding, we touched on it earlier. The same technology appears in our complete range of HD CVI products. And just like it did in the, the TIOC, um, we were talking across a network, we can do two-way talk across a piece of coax. So this is a signal to noise ratio of greater than 20 dB. So extremely high quality uh, transmission of audio in, in, in both directions. Again, we can have the active deterrent with PIR. So this technology, again, everything that you've seen in TIOC is really now becoming available in HDCVI, and I already touched on the power over coax. And again, think of a, ma uh, a maximum distance of 400 meters. Being able to send the power 400 meters really can represent a, a massive advantage to, to you as an installer potentially, but also the, uh, the end user in terms of the cost advantage. And of course, we make a, uh, we make a complete solution. Um, so we've, we're really pleased to be able to say today that the the features that we talked about, the face mask detection um, and, and the, the advantages of TIOG are really now being included into HD CVI. So full color, active deterrent, and the artificial intelligence that we talked about in TIOG is now available on our full range of HD CVI products. So a massive, a massive advantage um, in, in, in terms of uh, feature upgrade if you're using the HD CVI product. And again, here are the uh, here are the specifications. Uh, again, for your reference, um, we can we can talk about them. So things like the built-in speaker, uh, again, all of the the active deterrent features, the red and the blue LEDs, are now all available on the HD CVI range. But also, you need recorders. So we have a a, a couple of recorders here. Well, a, a couple of series of recorders, a range of recorders: the 5000 series XVR and the 7000 series XVR. Again, you can see the specifications. I, I don't intend to uh, to walk through those uh, in individually, but they're there for your reference if you uh, if you if you need them um, at a later at a later date. And again, don't forget that real time alert. Really, really important. Uh, we have that uh, we have that feature in, enabled. So just closing out now. Really, uh, we're coming to the end of uh, coming to the end of the the webinar. If you're not already using um, Dawa products, then we'd like to give you perhaps just to finish 10 reasons why you might consider using us in the future. To start with is probably one of the most important. Dawa puts the customer at the center of, of our product development. So we listen to the needs of the customer. That's really important because not only does it uh, 
does it allow us to develop te latest technologies, but it allows us to develop meaningful technologies that will uh, really impact and improve the, uh, the security and the lives of our, of our end user customers. We offer unparalleled quality and reliability. All of our products are rigorously tested. And, and if you, some of you have attended uh, webinars before, uh, we, we can talk to you about the, um, the reliability of things like on our, on our PTZ product, the slip ring, uh, the wiring harness, the quality of the belt and the motor. Well, all of those are really, really important. If you're an installer or, or the user of a system, you want to make sure that the system is, is highly reliable. You don't need failure, you don't want failures. So we, uh, we're, we're able to deliver unparalleled quality and reliability. We work in partnership with, with not only our installation partners, but also our value added distributors. We bring innovation to the security industry using AIoT. So a lot of the technologies that you've seen um, appearing in TIOC now are available in, in the HDCVI range. But this is market leading, this is industry leading. The technologies that you've seen, the active deterrent, the full color, and the artificial intelligence, those systems may, those features may exist in different cameras from our competition, but they do not exist in the same package. Dawa is the only manufacturer in the industry that bring all of those features into the same, same, same camera. We deliver innovative solutions using the latest technology. We love our customers to come to us and challenge us and, and give us a problem to, to solve. We like to use different parts of our technology. The range of Dawa products is, is huge, you know, whether that's from cameras to displays or drones to network switches. We, we can supply everything, uh, uh, everything along the way. So challenge us. Let us, uh, let us try to find a, a, an innovative solution to your customers' problems. We do that by investing a lot of money in terms of our technology. And last year, we invested almost $400 million in research and development. Part of that not just goes to uh, producing the latest technology, but also finding ways we can be more environmentally friendly. As a manufacturer, one of the things that's really key to us is being able to reduce our carbon footprint. So whether that's, and that's just not, not just a story to do with packaging, it's to do with transportation, it's to do with the design of the product. It's things like the, uh, the power over coax. You don't have to have all these separate power supplies. You can have one central power supply that powers lots of multiple devices. Right away from the design, from the construction, and again, to the, the recycling of, of, uh, of product and packaging when the product becomes end of life. So these are really, uh, really, really key, key areas and, and something that's very important to us. We are an end-to-end -end solution provider. As I said, we can provide everything um, that the customer needs in terms of enhancing their security or improving their security. Um, if, we, if, we, um, if, if you have a question, if you don't know whether we make something, please ask us. The likelihood is we'll, we'll make it. So there, I, I'm learning every day of new, new technologies, new products that we have. I, I learned only recently that we, we, have an, um, we have an environmental monitoring system that monitors air quality on construction sites. It monitors noise on a construction site whole range of, of, of different products that we have that are, um, that, that are really um, aimed at making a difference to our customers' lives. We work also, we don't do it alone, we work also with over 300 integration partners. Of course, that, that, so there are the normal, normal partners like Genetech, like Milestone, et cetera, all of these third party, uh, third party suppliers. But it, we often work with the smaller niche ones as well to maybe provide a solution that's a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more perhaps specific to trying to meet the needs of the customer. And finally, we adopt the all international safety and environmental safety standards. So these are really important to us. We take our responsibility um, corporately and, and socially very, uh, that's very, very dear to, uh, to who we are as a company. So if you're in any doubt about where to buy, if you're, uh, if you're interested in a TIOC camera or trying some of our HDCVI products, Here's a list of our distribution partners, um, both in the United Kingdom um, and also in Ireland. So um, again, they, they're all value added distributors. So if, you, um, if you'd like to try a product, contact us, contact them. We're all there ready and waiting to help you. So thank you very much for attending. Um, we, I've really enjoyed uh, presenting the, uh, the upgraded face mask detection features of the TIOC camera and, and also more importantly, how all of those TIOC features are being implemented into uh, HD CVI range. So thank you once again for attending. 
I've enjoyed talking to you. If you have a question, uh, please send it in by chat or alternatively contact me. My contact details are there at the bottom of the screen. We will send these uh, slides out to you um, along with some product brochures and literature the, uh, later on this afternoon or, or early tomorrow morning. So thank you once again for attending. I look forward to talking to you on the next webinar. Thank you and goodbye.